Hello, Reformers, and welcome back to Fantasy Calvaria. Now, when we left off, we had just taken a couple of thieves from the Vagiers and chased some unholy knights, but unfortunately we were not able to acquire any loot. Now, as you may have seen as we faded in here, the message that we received had another band of unholy knights spawn, so not entirely sure whether we will be going after those fellows as we are currently occupied with a very important siege indeed, and that is of course Rivercheg. So we will be leading our soldiers in an assault in just a moment. I must just mention that the Saranid Sultanate, who I thought were no longer in the game whatsoever, because I thought we had completely deleted them, basically, with the Delthusum Empire as their vassal, and it appears that they have declared war against the elves. So that is rather strange, is it not? But, hmm, well, nevertheless, we are now going to be leading our soldiers in an assault, and we are currently having morale issues, so we do need to get quite a bit from this, hopefully. And without further ado, let us begin. Okay, now we do have <laughs> a siege tower, so this is where I am not going to be too pleased, that is for sure. However, our shadow wizards and liches and so forth should do a very good job indeed. So, let us just hope that I will be able to get some XP as well, because, goodness me, we know that I need a lot of trainer skill, and I need a lot of faith as well, so, yeah, let us attempt to do just that. Now, I'm not entirely sure where the enemy units are. Ah, there's some over there. And I am rejuvenating my mana reasonably well. Let's just hope I can take out more of these units. Oh, no. Now I've run out of mana. Great. Okay, well, we will have to wait for that. But it appears that the siege tower is moving quite fast for a siege tower, of course. And, oh, it appears that Eden has advanced to level 10. So that is even better. One of our mage companions right there. We can hopefully make him into a very, very powerful wizard, that is for sure. And let us just continue to bombard our opponents with our lightning bolts. And now we will attempt to go in there with our Vorpal Blade. And hopefully before those reinforcements come down here. Come on guys, get in there. Oh no, something tells me we may have a couple of issues. Okay, well, I'm gonna try to put our archers in a hold position on these stairs here to hopefully prevent them from dying and running in, and hopefully that will be the case. It appears that, oh, we're doing quite well, but there is a couple of ranged units over here. Usually these are the fellows that take me out from behind. Do need to be cautious of them, of course. Now, I do realize that using this sword in a one-handed manner is going to be much slower than if I were to use it two-handed, but I feel as though blocking those javelins was much more necessary in terms of defeating these guys. So let us try to do just that. These fellows are never going to defeat me, I don't believe. However, that guy had a shield, and I was able to use my Vorpal Strike on him, of course. Come on, there we are. Take him down as well. So that is good. We've cleared all of this area in the town, and it appears that our units are actually doing a pretty reasonable job in all comparisons to previous sieges, of course. So, <laughs> it's not bad. Okay. I was actually not expecting this to go very smoothly because of the Siege Tower. I think the Siege Tower usually will, of course, cause us to have quite a few issues in terms of how many units we're able to take out and, you know, how long it will actually take us to get into the keep and onto the battlements. But, hmm, it appears we will have to take these guys out as quickly as we can. Let's do it. Yes, there we are. We're actually taking quite a few of them down now, which is very, very good. Now, I am going to take a look at the map of this, because I'm not entirely sure how many thieves the Vagiers actually have now, because I seem to remember last time around they only had a couple of castles, so hopefully that will be the case this time around. Now, your party gains 72 morale and 19 renown, very nice indeed. 377 units we took out, and... We can now re-establish some of our forces that we lost due to the morale deficit that we currently are dealing with. So, without further ado, let us get our Blazing Hand units. And what else do we want then? We want some Bandit Mages, so that they can become Dark Mages eventually. 
And maybe some Dro units as well. That would be rather nice because I have a feeling that if they were to level up into their latest tier of infantry, as you fellows have told me in the comments previously, they do become Dro Blade Masters, I believe. And I can imagine that they will be excellent units. So let's get some dwarves. A foot dwarf as well. And I think that will be it, actually, because as you can see here, we need one space for all of our zombies and so forth. So, yes, we will just take some of these, and that will be that. Now, I don't really need the money, but I will be taking some of this loot just to fill up our inventory a little bit. And then we will be moving on. So, I have thought about this before I started recording, and I believe that deferring appointment of a lord until we are able to fully understand the relations between our various vassals is probably going to be a good idea because I have a bad feeling that if I were to give this to anyone but Mr. Ortracker, we would have a lot of trouble because everyone is extremely low in relation with me and I would not like to lower it any further. So let us defer appointment at the moment. That does mean, of course, that it gets garrisoned automatically, which is wonderful with some Vagia units, but that will not prevent anyone from, of course, sieging it if they so wish. So we do need to... Oh. <laughs> we do need to be cautious about that, but yes, it appears we are being attacked by bandits, which is not necessarily going to be working out for them too well. Whoa, okay. Maybe not. Maybe it will work out for them. Thank you, Yumira. That was very nice of you. Okay, so let's hopefully... Whoa. Alethira's shooting is actually coming along very nicely indeed, as you can see here. Oh, I thought it was a headshot, but... It was right through the heart, which was a lot better, so, hmm, very nice. Okay, I'm getting a little bit more impressed with our companions day by day, and now let us just check in, ooh, the tavern for a possible companion. And here is Bunduk. I believe we had him in one of our previous series. And I think we should take him. It's a long story, but if you get yourself a drink, I'll be glad to tell it. A sergeant I was in the garrison here at Rivercheg. Twenty years I stood guard for the city, taking many a hard knock in many a tough fight, until they appointed a snot-nosed, downy-lipped princeling, barely out of his mother's cradle as commander of the garrison. He came upon me, standing watch atop the tower with my crossbow unstrung. On account of the rain, you see, can't have the cord loosen. But little Prince Snotnose tells me that an unstrung bow is dereliction of duty, says he'll have me horsewhipped, and something in me snapped, so I walked off my post. Now I'm here getting drunk, and the devil take tomorrow. I can use experienced fighters, however, I am going to need to change my army a little bit, because now we have a full army, and I do need to make sure that we do not lose any of them. Or at least we do not lose the ability to gain zombies and indeed skeletons, perhaps. So, actually, shall we get a wizard or a knight? Hmm. We already have how many wizards? Two. <laughs> okay, let's get a knight then, why not? That is our first knight that we've gotten in quite some time. I believe we did have a rather large group of them because I was, well, I suppose, sticking to the formula of creating shadows out of thin air very consistently, but this time around I have concentrated more on keeping our units alive, I suppose, because the shadow units, I don't know whether you've noticed, but they do have a very short lifespan. So that is a problem, but nevertheless, let us now level up Eden and we will see what we want him to spec into. I think we'd probably want him to level up his intelligence a little bit more. And what else do we want here? Hmm. I think Power Throw would probably do quite well. And we could go for... Hmm. This is difficult. No! <laughs> okay, what about Trainer? Oh, he's already got five in Trainer. Well, that's amazing. Okay, so yes, he apparently knows how to spec into his points. We do not. Or at least I do not, shall we say. Okay. Well... Hmm. This is very tricky indeed, isn't it? Okay. Hmm, okay, what about Persuasion? I think Persuasion would probably help later on if we're going to send him to various people as a emissary, perhaps? 
maybe that would be a good idea. So let's get him a little bit in persuasion because at the moment we really do not have anything else to spec him into. So that seems fine. And now Umi has also leveled up, which is great. Let's get her some more strength. Should we get her some more strength? Yeah, I think that's fine. We'll get her to 18 strength and then we'll start leveling her other skills and attributes. And we'll level up her athletics a little bit more as well to hopefully make her a little bit quicker on the battlefield. So, let us get rid of one unit. But which unit is it going to be? That is the thing I am having a couple of issues with at the moment. Okay, I think one of these... I think this one will probably go because it does not have a shield as far as I'm aware, so disband one of those, that will be fine. Okay, so how many units are we going to get? 116 skeletons, not too bad, and we can give those to the garrison here and hopefully prevent it from being retaliatory striked against. And now, where are we going? Because as you can see here, Maple Edge Castle is held by the Blazing Hand, Lynn Acre Castle is held by the Blazing Hand, and the only one that is not, or should we say the only ones, are Dramug Castle, Sungetcha Castle, Nelai Castle, and Tolbark. Oh my, that's quite far away, isn't it? Oh my goodness. Okay, well, hmm, I think we will go to Dramug because that is, well, I think Sungetcha or Dramug would probably be fine. And we're not close to either one of them. So let's go to Dramug Castle and we will scout it out, see how well we do. Now let's just, just hope that Rivercheg does not come under siege. And oh my goodness, look at that. Spawned from hell have come to bring death and destruction. That is wonderful. Okay. And as you can see here, Raucho of the Kingdom of Aegeus has just been taken prisoner by the Realm of Shadows, which is even better. Wonderful. Now I do need to watch out just in case we have an encounter with Hell Knights or Unholy Knights or some sort of knight and I would like to be able to hopefully engage some of them again but who knows whether we'll find them. Now Mr. Ore Tracker here is attempting to pursue one of the Vagia's vassals which is always a great thing to see that is for sure. I am so pleased whenever one of our vassals does well and oh it appears Selesk is being raided but we do have more urgent business in my opinion. So let us continue onward. Okay, so... Oh, okay, 179. We are going to be doing this as quickly as we can. There we are. Let's go in, shall we? Okay, oh, thank goodness. I was just about to say, please do not be a siege tower again, because we probably would have issues with morale again if we had to wait 78 hours for it to be built. That would be terrible, but... Anyway, we are ready to lead our soldiers in an assault against Dramug, and oh my, this is giving them a very big height advantage at the moment, but maybe it does not matter. Our master mages are doing an excellent job as per usual, and I would like to get in the action as well, if possible, so let's try and get some lightning bolts off here, and yes, we're actually taking out quite a few of them, which is very nice indeed. I'm hoping that Arcane will be able to level up very soon again. And oh no, they actually have a very nice archery spot over there. As you can see, I'm throwing lightning bolts up into the archery nest and hopefully we'll be able to take out as many as we need to to prevent our units from being taken out. Now, new enemies have arrived, but I do not believe that will be too difficult to deal with as we have the advantage now, or at least I think we should have the advantage considering we have just entered the courtyard or... Maybe it is the courtyard. I am not familiar with this castle layout. It's been a while since I have fought in a castle layout such as this. So, oh, look at that. Did you see that? I actually got a headshot with a spell. That is wonderful. Well, okay. I was not aware that that was possible, but there it is. Very nice indeed. Well, I suppose it is possible because we did have the missile storm attack, and we used that a little bit, and that gave us the ability to get headshots and I'm actually rather disappointed now because I don't know whether you saw but a little bit above this particular text here you may have seen a Shadow Knight and you know what happened to the Shadow Knight the one that I decided to level up into a Shadow Knight rather than a Shadow Wizard oh yes he just died he died like right there wonderful <laughs> okay well I suppose that has a small testament to why we should not go for melee units in terms of shadows. 
it does not appear to be very lucrative in terms of survivability as such. So let us just attempt to stay alive versus all of these archers. And I must just mention that I do not have any points in shield, so this is going to be rather painful. Come on. Take them all down. Yes, there we are. Very nice. Good. Okay. Oh, another headshot as well. Did you see that? Whoa, goodness me. Okay, very nice indeed. That levels up our proficiency a little bit more as well. So that's good. Okay, so 8 renown, 37 morale. Morale is always a very pleasing sight. Let's get another bandit mage. And what else do we want to get here? I don't think mercenary mage is going to be too useful here. So I will be going for some drow or drow fighters. And maybe some drow acolytes as well. That should be fine. Isn't it? Yes, I think so. And we currently cannot take any more prisoners, so that should be okay. So, now let us head on, and we will be... Hmm. I'd actually like to give this to Mr. Ore Tracker, to be honest, but... He is close, but... Hmm. If I give this to him, all of our relations with various vassals will go down, as you may see here. Oh my goodness, yes. We are not having a good time with a relation, that is for sure, so, hmm. It might actually require me to indict nearly all of our vassals and maybe recruit them in the future if we are able to find them once again, but the unfortunate thing is, most of those fellows, most of our vassals, are actually companions, or shall we say prior companions, so uh, that is not good. That is definitely not good, because now we are going to be having issues with, I suppose, having a huge amount of our vassals and companions running around the land and defending our territory, so I think what I may actually do is indict some of the companions and some of the vassals, but keep the ones that I feel are I suppose, loyal enough to stick with us, and I suppose we will just have to indict the ones that are not. So, hmm, that is going to be very painful indeed if we have to get rid of Lady Mateld and Lord Fruorin, because of course I made the decision to give them a fief, and I think it probably would have been a better idea to hold off on it for a little bit, perhaps. But, hmm, what can you do? Decisions have been made, and... We will not be going back on our decisions, of course. We will stick by them as best we can and deal with the consequences as they arrive. So, let us now analyze the garrison at Sun Getcha. Okay, well, it's not that bad, actually. It's only around 300 units. Yes, only around 300. And it is a siege tower. This is not good. Okay, this is why... Hmm... I really want to take this, but I also want to take Nelag Castle. Okay, we're just going to go in here, take this, and bite the bullet. And it appears that Mr. Ortracker does require our assistance for his most recent campaign, I guess. So maybe we will head off after this if he is going to stick around. Something tells me he is a man of action, and he is probably going to be moving very swiftly indeed to his nearest target, or the target that he deems necessary. And I'm pretty sure that it's either going to be Nelag Castle or Talbot Castle, hopefully. That would be very pleasing, to say the least. And it appears that a couple of the Norcruck Realm vassals are now being defeated in battle, which of course means that they are not Dwarven vassals, but they are indeed defectors from various other factions. So what I am hoping will happen here is we will be able to construct the siege tower and then be able to defend it, maybe, before the Vagia vassals decide to engage upon us. As you can see, they are revving up for it. There are a huge amount of them. Look at that. 143, 74, I believe, over there. And they have 43 and maybe 52 over here. So I'm actually very puzzled as to why they did not interrupt me, but hmm. Nevertheless, maybe they think they will be able to take it from us after we have completed our siege. So let us hope that we will be able to prevail in this without any casualties, or at least a very small amount of casualties, and then we will be able to defend against the mighty onslaught of five or six Vagia vassals. Now, as you may have seen in the screen on the world map, just before we entered this particular castle, there was a vassal from the Realm of Shadows on his or her way here. So I'm assuming 
that that is Mr. Ortracker himself, and he was coming to assist us. But unfortunately, we entered a little bit too soon, and he is now obviously stuck on the outside and not in this particular siege. So he will have to head on and hopefully help us in other areas. But maybe he will come and help us in the garrison to defend it against the various vassals, who knows? We'll see how that goes, of course. Now, I'm just going to try to deal a huge amount of damage with my lightning bolt, of course. And... Come on. Ooh. A little bit lower, I think. Yes, that should be good. Maybe I've hit all of them already. Hmm, it appears so. Okay, well, this siege tower is going to take quite some time, so I will be cutting away very shortly, and once it has reached the wall, I will be cutting back. Okay, so here we are. We are advancing up the siege tower, and we are now going to test our metal against the remaining 30 enemies in the garrison here. So let us... Oh, okay, so we have some wizards down in the courtyard here, and we are going to hopefully take them out as swiftly as we can. They do have magic defense. And I do not have as much magic power as I once had, as one of you did actually observe in the previous episode. So I do thank you for your observation, because of course, I sometimes do tend to forget these things. So thank you very much for that now. Oh my, come on. Let's try some very long range shots here, and oh! We actually took out that archer over there. That was very nice, okay. Well, that's good. Now, let us attempt to jump down here. No, I do not believe we can actually get on the other side, so we have to maybe go round along the battlements. That is forcing us into a rather considerable bottleneck, and if they have any wizards remaining, then they are going to be causing us quite a bit of pain, but I have a feeling that our inquisitors are going to have enough magic defense to hopefully survive long enough to get over there. And they do have a wizard! Let's take him out! Yes, there we are. Good. Oh, and it appears we have actually lost one of the undead, but mm, thankfully enough he was taken out by one of our master mages. So, there we are. That battle was won very easily. And now, it appears that we will have to defend against the onslaught of the various Vagia vassals that are waiting outside. So, let us recruit as many units as we can here. I do not believe the zombies are going to be too useful, so let's try to get a couple of other units. So, I think bandit mages are always going to be certifiably good, and we'll take some drow mages as well. And I do not believe anything else here is worth taking, maybe? Well, I would like to take more, but of course, as you see here, we are full, so we will not be able to at this time. So, let's just take a few pieces of loot. And... oh no, this is difficult. Okay, well, <laughs> who do we want to keep? That is what we are going to decide here. I think I probably want to keep Frudak, but saying that, he does not have the party size capable of being very effective. So... Hmm... That is not too good. Lord Furoran already has a town, so if he defects to someone else, we are going to be in serious trouble, so... Yeah, let's go for Frudak and see how much relation he has now. He has 18 relation, Furoran has minus one, Devlian, Emleza, and Ulusame all have less than minus 30, so, hmm, that is definitely going to be something we want to deal with. I didn't see how much Lady Matteld has, but I'm pretty sure she has minus 20-something, so, hmm, that is definitely something we need to watch out for. And there is Mr. Ortracker himself, of course. Thank you very much for turning up, fellow. You decided to help us out right there. So, 46 shadows we gained from the remains of our enemies, which is great, and... It appears that there are no Avagia vassals attempting to strike back at us immediately. So, I will be ending this episode off here, and next time on Fantasy Cal Radio, hopefully, we will have the ability to take Nelai Castle and Tolbuck Castle very quickly indeed, knock out the Vagias, and then I suppose we will do our very best to sort out our vassals as well. Maybe I will do that off screen, we will see how well it goes. But for now, I thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.